Good morning, St. Matthew's online community. Uh, my name is Pastor Andrea White, and I am a member of St. Matthew's, and I'm filling in for Colville, Father Colville, this uh, this Sunday and next Sunday. I'm a member of the choir, and so I'm changing my choir ropes this week for my vestments. I have a couple of things uh, to announce for announcements today. Uh, first of all, uh, St. Matthew's is updating its directory, and if you have any problems, if you want to uh, change any information and you're not quite sure how to do that, uh, you can uh, email Natalie and she will help you with that. Or if you don't have an online account and you'd like to be part of the online directory, you can also email Natalie. Second, I'd like to uh, invite you to the Lenten soup suppers. They are on Thursday evenings, and there'll be soup, a basic soup and bread and a few things like that. And then afterwards, there will be evening prayer. So that starts at 545, 545. So uh, that's when you'll need to be there for the soup part of it. Okay, so let us begin our service. Is mighty to say, He is mighty. 
Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Hear the commandments of God to his people. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of bondage. You shall have no other gods but me. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not make for yourself any idol. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not invoke with malice the name of the Lord your God. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Honor your father and your mother. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not commit murder. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not commit adultery. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not steal. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not be a false witness. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. O God, whose glory it is always to have mercy, be gracious to all who have gone astray from your ways, and bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word, Jesus Christ, your Son, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from Genesis. The word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O oh Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, You have given me no offspring, and so a slave born in my house is to be my heir. But the word of the Lord came to him, This man shall not be your heir. No one but your very own issue shall be your heir. 
he brought him outside and said, Look towards the heaven and count the stars, if you are able to count them. Then he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. Then he said to him, I am the Lord who brought you from Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land to possess. But he said, O Lord God, how am I to know that I shall possess it? He said to him, Bring me a heifer three years old, a female goat three years old, a ram three years old, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. He brought him all these and cut them in two, laying each half over against the other, but he did not cut the birds in two. And when birds of prey came down on the carcasses, Abram drove them away. As the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and a deep and terrifying darkness descended upon him. When the sun had gone down and it was dark, a smoking firepot and a flaming torch passed between these pieces. On that day the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, To your descendants I give this land, from the river of Egypt to the great river, the river Euphrates. The Word of the Lord Please join us in the reading of Psalm 27. The, the Lord, Lord is my, my light and my, and my salvation. salvation. Whom then, then shall I fear? I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom then shall I be afraid? When evildoers come upon me to eat up my flesh, it was they, my foes and my adversaries, who stumbled and fell. Though an army should encamp against me, yet my heart shall not be afraid. And though war should rise up against me, yet will I put my trust in him. One thing have I asked of the Lord, one thing I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the fair beauty of the Lord, and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble he shall keep me safe in his shelter. He shall hide me in the secrecy of his dwelling, and set me high upon a rock. Even now he lifts up my head, above my enemies round about me. Therefore I will offer in his dwelling an oblation, with sounds of great gladness. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hearken to my voice, O Lord, when I call. Have mercy on me and answer me. You speak in my heart and say, Seek my face. Your face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not your face from me, nor turn away your servant in displeasure. You have been my helper, cast me not away. Do not forsake me, O God of my salvation. Though my father and my mother forsake me, the Lord will sustain me. Show me your way, O Lord. Lead me on a level path because of my enemies. Deliver me not into the hand of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen up against me, and also those who speak malice. What if I had not believed that I should see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living? Oh, tarry and await the Lord's pleasure. Be strong, and he shall comfort your heart. Wait patiently for the Lord. A reading from Paul's letter to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, join in, in imitating me and observe those who live according to the example you have in us. For many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. I have often told you of them, and now I tell you even with tears. Their end is destruction, their God is the belly, and their glory is in their shame. Their minds are set on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven, 
And it is from there that we are expecting a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will transform the body of our humiliation, that it may be conformed to the body of His glory, by the power that also enables Him to make all things subject to Himself. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Some Pharisees came and said to Jesus, Get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. He said to them, Go and tell that fox for me. Listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow, and on the third day I finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow, and the next day I must be on my way because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you are not willing. See, your house is left to you, and I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. The Gospel of the Lord. A few weeks ago, our presiding bishop, Michael Curry, held a prayer vigil for the people of Ukraine when the threat of invasion from Russia appeared imminent. Many other Christian denominations and interfaith leaders joined him in the vigil. His prayers were for the people and the children of God whose lives and freedom are threatened. He prayed that there would be peace, that a peaceful, diplomatic, nonviolent solution would be reached, that the lives of innocent people, who all are God's children, would be spared. As we know, so far there is no peace. Over two million Ukrainians have fled the country in fear for their lives. 
The casualties of this war continue to mount on both sides of the conflict. Our prayers continue. We will not stop praying until a just and peaceful solution is reached. There's a reason I bring up this plea from our faith leaders to continue to pray for the people of Ukraine, and I might add for the people of Russia as well. They too have been demonstrating against the violent invasion of Ukraine. My reason has to do with ancestry, where we came from, and it can be fascinating. Years ago, while reading the historical fiction novel Ruska by Edward Rutherford, some of the events and stories were sounding familiar to me, stories that were passed down from family. I knew my paternal grandmother was of Eastern European descent and an Orthodox Christian, so I decided to investigate further. As it turns out, my grandmother's father was from Galicia, a former kingdom in Eastern Europe, in an area around the Carpathian Mountains, which later became part of modern-day Ukraine. Most of the people in that area were Ruthenians, that is, Eastern Slavs and Orthodox Christians who recognized the Pope. And because of their religious ties, it's likely my ancestors were Ruthenian, ethnic Ukrainians as well. Towards the end of the 19th century, my grandmother's father packed up his family and left the region, making his way to the United States. I always wondered, why did he decide to make that long and tedious trek? Did it have to do with famine and poverty? Was it because of conflict and oppression in the area from many past invasions? I don't know for sure. I can only presume he left in hopes of a better life. It's highly likely that I still have relatives in the Ukraine, since not all of my great-grandfather's family left the region. So I humbly ask for your continued prayers for descendants that still may be there. In our reading from Genesis this morning, I can't help but be reminded that when called by God to leave his country and his kin and go to a new land, Abram went as God commanded. Abram, too, journeyed from the land of his ancestors to a new place. No surprise that the journey wasn't straightforward nor easy. It definitely had its ups and downs. Many things happened to Abram and his family on the way to the land God promised by God. By the time we read this passage, Abram has arrived in Canaan, and he is doing quite well. He has indeed been blessed. But something is not quite right. Abram continues to live with doubt and anxiety over what God has promised and what has happened so far. One might say Abram has a crisis of faith, an issue of trust in God. So he pushes back in his vision. He asks God questions. Patiently, God reassures him that his reward will be great. It has been great, and that he has no reason to be afraid. But Abram has reached old age, and his patience is growing thin. The main issue for Abram is that he has no offspring, no heir. And how will God make him a great nation if he has no legitimate heir? How can he be sure this land we that he now occupies is the land that he will possess. Things seem to come together for Abram. He seems to gain some understanding when God takes him outside to gaze up at the stars in the sky. See all those stars up there? Count them, and you will know then how many descendants I will give you. It's God's promise to Abram for the future. Now, it's not one of those rosy promises. As we hear in the reading, the ancestors will experience some dark times. Their journey will be long, and it will have its ups and downs. For Abram, now, it truly is a question of faith. He's been on that journey since 
God called him out of the land of Ur, of the Chaldeans. And for him, that journey of faith included doubt and questioning. Doubt and questioning. If you don't already know, doubt and questioning does not make us less faithful. If anything, it has the capacity to deepen our faith and our trust in God. I believe that for my ancestors, and for any of our ancestors that left their homeland, they had to have trust in God and some faith to travel so far, to go to a place where they did not know the language or the culture. Would they be accepted? Would their lives truly be better? I do have a few things I'd like to say about the gospel reading uh, today as well. Jesus, too, is on a journey that takes him far from his home. It would be a while before he reaches his destination, which we know is Jerusalem. And Jesus is well aware of what happens to prophets that go there. Threats to security and to life are nothing new to Jesus. This isn't the first time his life has been threatened. When some Pharisees tell him Herod wants to kill him, Jesus doesn't act like he's a bit surprised. Now, I personally can't imagine what it would be like to live with a price on your head. What stands out is Jesus' response to the Pharisees, who previously have had it out for him. Jesus responds to the threat by telling the Pharisees to go back and give that fox Herod the message that he's got far more important things to do like healing and casting out demons, and to accomplish, to be, to be concerned with Herod's threats. While Herod might terrify, terrify and terrorize everyone else, he did, after all, behead John the Baptist. It's clear that Jesus is in charge of his own timetable. Jesus is finishing up his work where he is, and then the journey to Jerusalem will continue. He does not allow threats to deter him from following his vocation, and it is in following his vocation that seeks salvation for humankind that he finds his strength. All along the way, crowds of people from Galilee, Judea, and even Jerusalem follow Jesus and continue to follow as he makes his way to Jerusalem. If Jesus was making the journey today, speaking of technology, there would surely be a host of social media followers tracking his every step. And there'd be hundreds more turn out in person to see him as he passed by their towns and villages. Because wherever Jesus goes, he brings hope along with signs of the kingdom. Lent is a journeying time when we are called to examine and reflect on our faith. We need not fear when we put our trust in God and remain open to possibilities. As we reflect on our lives, it behooves us to remember that in God's eyes, we are one. All are God's children and God's people created in our Creator's image, and we are beloved. We may have different experiences, different traditions, different beliefs. That should not, however, be a hindrance to living in peace with each other. We have experienced that in times of crisis, people from all places and circumstances reach out with kindness and caring and generosity to one another. That is humankind at its best. This Lent, we are given many opportunities to reconnect with our past and look to our future. As we heard last week, the theme of Lent this year at St. Matthew's is reconnect. Whatever that looks like for you, I urge you to take those steps to connect or reconnect with your church, with community, with people perhaps you haven't seen or talked to in a long time. I don't know about you, but I suspect we tend to forget and be, be less aware about the things that are not part of our busy, everyday lives. For me, the horrific events in the Ukraine were a wake-up call. 
first because of my ancestry and the possibility of kin still living there. But even more so, it affirms to me how closely connected we are as the people of God. And so my prayers are more intentional for an end to the violence, for safety, and for a meaningful peace for all the people in that area of the world. I share with you a prayer from ELCA Bishop Elizabeth Eaton. Let us pray. O Lord, God of life, as you care for all creation, give us your peace. May our security come not from weapons, but from respect. May our strength come not from violence, but from love. May our own wealth come not from money, but from sharing. May our path be not one of ambition, but of justice. May our victory not be one of revenge, but of forgiveness. Unarmed and confident, help us to defend the dignity of all creation, sharing today and always the bread of solidarity and peace. Amen. As you came to Abram in the night vision, so help us to receive your living word and presence, that we may believe and have it reckoned to us as righteousness. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom then shall I fear? Lead us through these forty days of Lent to the good land of our spiritual possession, that we might enter into the fullness you intend for all who love you. The Lord is the strength of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? We intercede for the church, remembering the laity who constitute our witness and ministry in this parish. Remind us of our heavenly citizenship 
and of the hope that is ours in Christ our Savior. I shall dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Be with our President, with Congress and the Supreme Court, quickening minds, enlivening debate, and stirring the gifts of leadership, that our nation might act in wisdom and strive for justice. Hearken to my voice when I call. Comfort and heal our sick, and raise up those in distress, remembering especially those for whom our prayers are now offered. That they may know the joy of your saving help. You speak in my heart and say, Seek my face, your face will I see. We intercede for Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who sent those sent to it, that the divided peoples who dwell therein would hear your gathering call and turn to the way of peace. Show me your way and lead me in a level path. O tarry and await the Lord's pleasure. Be strong and God shall comfort your heart. Wait patiently for the Lord my light and my salvation. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
And as our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Bow down before the Lord. Keep this, your family, Lord, with your never-failing mercy, that relying solely on the help of your heavenly grace, they may be upheld by your divine protection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.